morning, everyone, and welcome. Welcome to our uh, second week in our Lord's Prayer series that we're doing here. Oh, man, I was just thinking this morning just how delightful it was watching everyone walk up. I was like, I'm going to miss this when we go back in the sanctuary. <laughs> so uh, let's just soak it in the next couple Sundays before we head back in. I am just overjoyed to uh, have all of you here this day as we turn our hearts and minds to worship. I just want to invite you now to take a deep breath in and out. Center yourselves here in this sacred place as we worship our loving and creative God together this day. Amen. So as a part of our uh, Lord's Prayer series, we'd actually done a Bible study series on it, and we all uh, reimagined the Lord's Prayer in our own words. Um, and David, the song, bless David, you all, I sent him like an email on Wednesday, and I was like, could you take one of these prayers and put it to music? And he was like, oh, you just want me to write a song in four days? And I was like, yes. <laughs> Two songs. Yeah. <laughs> So thank God for David. He was inspired by uh, Peggy Johnston's uh, reinterpretation of the Lord's Prayer and put that to music for us for this day. Um, and for our poetry this morning, we're actually going to get to uh, hear two other versions of the Lord's Prayer that were written by some of our uh, members during our study of that time together. So I just want you to uh, receive these as poems and prayers and uh, just let them let them fall fresh on you, these modern interpretations of these ancient words. So I'm going to invite forward uh, Nancy, and Nancy is going to, can someone help me with this mic? It would almost work for me, but it won't quite work for... Yeah, right there. Thank you. How's that? Okay, you can hear me? <laughs> okay, thank you, Megan. Thanks for the introduction. Okay, my interpretation of the Lord's Prayer. My covenant with our spiritual guide. Our spiritual guide who lives above us in the celestial universe and who also lives within us. Restore thy spiritual kingdom and teach us to pray for peace to come. In times of temptation, strengthen us and help us to know right from wrong. For you, our holy partner, who reigns in everlasting love, your power is now and forever. May it be so. Amen. Thank you. I'm going to invite Linda forward to share her interpretation. And when Linda is done, we're just going to enter into a moment of silence to reflect on these two prayers and uh, just ponder what they have to say to us. O oh, creative loving spirit who is here all around us and in us, in the earth and sea and sky, praise for life. Fill us with your spirit. Reveal to us how we are one with you, with each other, and with all that is, so that we may create heaven on earth and fully realize the sacredness of all life. Help us meet the needs of all with compassion. Draw us back to the light 
to mindful thought and action, to life enhancing behavior, to connection with our higher self and all living beings, our planet, our universe. For this is the life that we have been given to experience creation through our body, mind, and spirit. Thank you for my life and for all life. Amen. Let's turn now to uh, join together in our first hymn, which is going to be All Who Hunger Gather Gladly. And it is on the insert in your bulletin. If you feel so called, I invite you to stand while we sing. Uh oh. Umbrella time. That means we're really worshiping when the umbrella comes out. He can't shade the entire congregation, unfortunately. <laughs> All right, you all, we're going to turn out to our scripture reading this day. Again, we're continuing on with the Lord's Prayer. We are focusing on two verses this morning from uh, the Matthew version of the Lord's Prayer. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. I'm getting too close to that speaker. Here we go. Um, so instead of reading the scripture today, we are going to say the Lord's Prayer together today um, because it is uh, really close to uh, the version that I'm preaching from. So instead of reading scripture, let's now turn to prayer and let's say together the traditional version of the Lord's Prayer that generations have gathered around together. Let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, Right, 
we'll take one more minute of prayer. We're going to do what's called the prayer for illumination, inviting God to uh, not only bless uh, that prayer, that reading from scripture, but also to bless the meditation as well. So let's join together in prayer. O Holy One, O Creator, O Artist God, help us to see in this poetry, in this prayer, your being. Help us to see your dreams, your wishes for all of us. May my words and the meditation of all of our hearts be pleasing to you, O God. In your name we pray. Amen. So, we all gathered together for a wedding of two of my beloved friends. All my college friends were there. Now, I have a bit of a confession to make. I was wild in college. Like, some people will tell you they were wild. I was wild in college, okay? That's a part of my story I'm not going to tell in this sermon, uh, but I just need to preface this story with that, okay? After college, I lived in Cameroon doing work with those living with HIV and AIDS. I went to seminary. I did a lot of internal work to get to a really good place within myself and an understanding of who I was. So going back to the group that knew me before I had done all that work, <laughs> that was really scary, right? I was so nervous. And not only was I pretty different from who they knew then, I was also a pastor. <laughs> so that comes with all its own baggage, right? Can we swear in front of her? Can we even be real in front of her? You know, all those kinds of questions. So at the rehearsal dinner, my friends who were getting married asked me to pray. Now, I don't remember quite exactly what I said, but I know how nervous I was. I, I thanked God for bringing us together that night, for sharing stories and connection, for the many paths we had all been on since we last saw each other. And then I transitioned to giving thanks for the food, as you do in a prayer before a meal. And because I was nervous, I talked longer. That's something I do, uh, which is why I write my sermons. So you all aren't going to be here for four hours every Sunday, right? So because I was nervous that night, the prayer went on a little bit longer. And I said, thank you for this food. Thank you for the hands that prepared it. Thank you for the hands that grew it. Thank you for the hands that picked it. Thank you for the hands that got it to us. And then I just ended with something like, thank you, God, for the ways our lives are impacted by so many at a simple dinner table. The prayer ended. I was like, oh, man, okay, well, that's done, you know? Just kind of feeling insecure, sat back down. And a friend came up to me, one of my only friends who had been devoutly Roman Catholic when we were in uh, college together. And let me just preface this by saying we're a bunch of sarcastic Midwesterners. So this might sound mean, but it, didn't, it wasn't mean what he said to me. He came up and said, wow, we could have been here all night with Presbyterian prayers like that. Thank you for the tractors that picked the wheat and the people who run the machines that made bread into loaves and the people who run the machines that put the bread into bags and the truck drivers and the grocery store people and even like the janitors at the grocery store who make sure that it's clean enough that they can get the permits to be open as a grocery store. I was like, oh man. He goes, us Roman Catholics, we just memorize quick stuff so we can start shoveling the food in. That's what he said, right? And then he gave me a hug and he said, thank you though. Thank you though. I never really think about all that goes in to the simple everyday stuff. I don't think many of us do, he said. And he was right. Right? In addition to just kind of lovingly making fun of me a little bit, we could have been there all night and maybe all day or all week if we chose to stop and think about the number of people needed just to have dinner that night. Or if we stopped to think of the number of people who are connected through even one piece of bread. 
our daily bread. What if we really did that, right? What if we, at each meal, we truly took a moment to be in awe of the community of people who had some part, even a small one, in the meals before us? That's what I think when I hear, give us this day our daily bread. I hear a moment of awe and gratitude for what we have. And yet there's a challenging part to this verse too, isn't there? Carolyn Taxer brought this up when we discussed this in the study that night. She said, what does this mean though for those who don't have bread? If God provides, why are so many people starving? What does it mean for the, according to the USDA, more than 38 million people, including 12 million children, in the United States who are food insecure. Where is God when they need bread, right? Well, this is where looking at the ancient language of the text is helpful. As we know here, there are layers of meaning in scripture, not just the literal words on the page. For example, we've talked before, right, about the Hebrew word ruach, which means three things, breath, wind, and spirit. Many words are like that in the English we speak today, and many were like that in, in ancient languages as well. Now in the New Testament era, bread was the most important food, especially for the poor and disenfranchised, who Jesus often refers to in the Sermon on the Mount, which is where this prayer is found. So scholars think definitely bread as sustenance was always read into this verse. However, they say, there were probably metaphorical ways it was read too. Because when we look at the Aramaic, the language that we believe Jesus spoke, when we look at the Aramaic, we see that the word for bread means two things. It means food, yes, bread. But it also means understanding or wisdom. And that changes things, doesn't it? Give us this day our daily bread and understanding. Daily bread, daily understanding. Daily bread, daily wisdom. I think that might help us with that upsetting part of this verse too. You know, that whole, if God gives us food, why are so many starving part? Because if we are asking for daily understanding too, then a part of daily understanding is knowing that God doesn't work like that. God isn't a genie. God doesn't grant wishes. Wealth, money, and abundance of resources and food, those are not signs that God loves you more than anyone else. It doesn't work like that. We understand that. So really, living into that daily understanding piece, I think we should be invited to wonder what this verse about daily bread asks us, of us, of each of us. What is our part in this daily bread and understanding stuff? I think about that song, it's been sung a few times here. Uh, most recently, I think Sarah sang it for us. And it begins, it's called Do Something. Do you all remember that song? Maybe some of you know it. If you don't look it up when you get home, it's called Do Something. And it begins by talking about all the pain and hurt in the world. And eventually the person looks up to the sky and says, God, why don't you do something? And God replies, I did. Yeah, I created you. That's what I understand in this verse. God is a part of making bread, daily bread for everyone happen, of course, but it's our feet, our hands, our heads, our hearts, our giving, our sharing, our understanding that does the work of making daily bread real for all people. This is a call to action as much as it is a prayer. Parker Palmer actually has a translation of the Lord's Prayer, and he writes these two verses for today. He writes them this way. Give us this day the bread we need. Give it to those who have none. Let forgiveness flow like a river between us from each one to each one. 
That feels really different, doesn't it? That forgiveness part feels very different there. Very different from forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And you all, forgiveness is such a tough topic. It's really tough. I, we did a whole study on it recently, and I just want to say first a few things forgiveness is not. Forgiveness is not forgetting. Forgiveness is not saying what happened is okay. Forgiveness is not those things. Forgiveness from the Greek here is about letting go. And today most healthcare professionals say forgiveness is about letting go too. Mayo Health, for example, where um, our beloved uh, parish associate Katie used to work at Mayo Health in Minnesota, um, Mayo Health, for example, says this, while forgiveness means different things to different people, generally it involves a decision to let go of resentments and thoughts of revenge. The act that hurt or offended you might always be with you, but forgiveness can lessen its grip on you and help free you from the control of the person or the event that harmed you. Now the phrasing of this verse is tricky. Forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Oof, I hope not, right? It can't be conditional based on how I act, right? It can't be like that. Like if we don't forgive, God doesn't forgive us? No, that's not what it's saying. So you can just remove that from your being. It's not saying that. We learned this story in our study of the Lord's Prayer that I want to share with you. It's about Leonardo da Vinci's painting of the Last Supper. It is said that da Vinci showed his hatred for an enemy by painting that face of the enemy on Judas Iscariot, right? Kind of creative, I thought. But then, when the artist tried to paint the face of Jesus, he couldn't bring up an image to paint. He couldn't see Jesus. So he thought and he thought, and then he worked. He worked to forgive his enemy. And he even painted over the picture that he had done of his enemy space on Judas. He redid that part. And the legend goes that that night, same night he painted over the face of his enemy. After he had pondered forgiveness, that night da Vinci had a dream in which he saw the face of Jesus and was able to paint it. One scholar says, history or legend, this lesson has truth in it. When we hold something against another person, we begin to shut out the face of Christ, the face of Jesus. And when the image of God is blurred, we often no longer have the faith to accept forgiveness. Here's what I think this is getting at. God already loves us. That's a done deal, okay? You don't have to worry about that. You've been singing it probably since you were, you know, I don't know, two? I don't know when you learned to sing, but you've been singing it a long time. Jesus loves me, this I know, for the Bible tells me so, right? You've been singing about God's love for a long time. Done deal. God has given us grace, this unmerited, unearned gift. We are forgiven and loved and have this gift of grace before we are even born before we exist. It's just who God is and how God works. And yet we still do awful things. We still do hurtful things. Small slights all the way to the worst things you can possibly imagine. Humans are capable of all the terrible. Somehow though, somehow by the grace of God, God refuses to let that stuff get in the way of loving. It doesn't make it all okay. It doesn't make it go away. But God stays with us no matter what. And yet I wonder about that da Vinci story and what it teaches us, right? If we only cling to the hurt and harm and trauma and pain, if we only cling to that, we may not be able to be open to all the goodness from God, the grace and love 
and forgiveness because we will be so held hostage by our hate or thoughts of revenge and resentment. I don't have any answers for you all about this, but those are some of the things I think about when I think about forgiveness. The men's group was meeting the other day. Do you remember this? It was maybe last Sunday. And they, I think Steve Allman was like, come over. We need, we need some answers. And I said, I'm not in the business of answers. So uh, if you've got questions, I'd love to talk about that. But I don't have answers, right? But here's the thing, you all. There aren't easy answers to any of this because this stuff is real. These parts of this prayer are real. They are real life. These aren't just ancient, old, dusty concepts that don't mean much anymore, right? They are the nitty-gritty of life. Food, understanding, forgiveness. It doesn't get more real life than that, does it? It doesn't get more daily than that, does it? This prayer, which is sometimes called our prayer, It really is ours, still today. It is for us and about us, just as much as it was for them and about them in the ancient world. So I wanna leave you with these words from, uh, from Pastor Rob McCoy, who says this about this prayer. He says, the Lord's Prayer can't be just words that we recite. It is a prayer that we live. It is one thing to say the words of the Lord's Prayer. It is an entirely different thing to live the Lord's Prayer. When you live the Lord's Prayer, he says, it becomes more than words that you say. It is the choices you make, the grace you show, the forgiveness you give, and the bread you share. May it be so. Amen. All right, we're gonna turn now to our next hymn. It's my one of, well, I shouldn't say it's my favorite because I'd be saying that every Sunday, but it's one of my favorites, Oh For A World, that really talks about how we can live what the Lord's Prayer teaches us. So if you feel so called, please stand. Oh For A World is on your bulletin insert. Let's sing together. Pastor Tom Schumann. I've edited it slightly, but this is his uh, his work, and it's based on the Lord's Prayer. There will be a time within this prayer where you are invited to share the prayers that you are carrying with you this day, to share them aloud with our community, and we will respond, Lord, hear our prayer after each one of those prayers. Let us pray. 
Our Father, our parent who art in heaven, remind us this day that you are not only creation's architect, but you are the baby who cried for food, the teenager who knew loneliness, the adult who felt the rejection of loved ones. Hallowed be thy name. Yours is the name spun by the stars. Yours is the name whispered by the dying. Yours is the name written on our hearts. Thy kingdom come, may it be a kingdom of peace, not prejudice. May it be a kingdom of sharing, not grasping. May it be a kingdom of hope, not hurting. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. May your word be more than print on a page. May your justice be more than a wish in our hearts. May your will become our deepest desires. Give us this day our daily bread. Let us taste it in moments of love. Let it fill us in the empty moments of our lives. Let it slip out of our hands to meet the brokenness of our world. And forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. May we release the control that harms have on our lives so we may live into the lives you have dreamed for us. And lead us not into temptation Turn our hearts from that which draws us away from you, from your love, peace, justice, and joy. Keep us from thinking we are so important that we ignore those around us. Help us to always be mindful of others' needs as well as our own. And help us to pray for our community and the world as we do now in this moment here. I'm going to share a few prayers first from our community that were sent in to be included in the service today. Prayers for Judy Stevens, who is suffering from sciatica and just in deep, deep pain. She needs our prayers. Lord, hear our prayers. Prayers for Rob Holdley, who had a really scary week. Um, he had three short V-fibs while he was driving. Um, and he's okay. All the other drivers were okay. There was no accident, by the grace of God. Uh, he got off the freeway safely and went to the hospital. Um, so he was in the hospital and they did an ablation and they're confident that they got the areas that are causing this. So he's home now, um, but needs our prayers for healing and his family needs our prayers too, Dory and the girls. Um, they love Rob so much and they've been through so much as a family. So they need our prayers. Lord, hear our prayers. Prayers for Carolyn Taxter's sister who was diagnosed with uterine cancer and all others dealing with cancer in their lives. Jerry, David, Barbara Brislin, Charlie, all of our friends, uh, all of their friends and families and loved ones. Lord, hear our prayers. Are there any prayers that you all would like to add to our prayers this day? like prayers for my Canadian cousin Daniel who passed away two weeks ago. It was really prayers for his family mm -hmm. because it was a shock. It wasn't expected. Oh. Prayers for uh, the family in the midst of the unexpected death of uh, Nancy's it's your cousin. Right. Cousin, Nancy's cousin Daniel. Lord, Lord hear, hear our prayers. prayers. Prayers for the refugees that are stuck at the Slovenia-Poland border who are suffering from hunger and cold. Lord, hear our prayers. God knows the prayers that are on our minds and hearts this day, even if the words are not spoken and holds them with us here. As we continue with our Lord's Prayer, prayers of the community, we turn to deliver us from evil. Not just great evils of war and hunger, but also from pride, from ingratitude, and all just the little things that can build up and do such harm. For thine is the kingdom, 
our heart's true longing and the power which you set aside to serve us in weakness and the glory which we would mirror in our lives, our bodies, our minds, our souls, this day and every day, forever and ever. Amen. So as you all know, we talk about this quite a bit. Life, um, life is full of so much pain and so much beauty. And uh, we hold all of those things in tension together as a community. So now is the time in our service when we share uh, things that we are grateful for, when we share thanksgivings with one another in our community here. So what are some gratitudes that you all would like to share in the midst of our community? Judy. <laughs> There's a paper bag full of about a thousand pounds of limes from my tree. Oh, oh free wow. limes. It's there we go. To just wear some seeds. There are plastic bags on top. Great. Wonderful. So uh, gratitude for God's creation and Judy's care of it uh, and free limes for all of us. So that's great. Uh, you can grab some. They're over here somewhere. Grab some before you leave today. Any other gratitudes? Yeah. Um, I'm grateful that my brother Sandy is visiting today from Seattle. Um, we for a couple of days and I thought he'd love our church because he's also an artist. And a music. Wonderful. <laughs> Welcome. Right in with our crowd. Oh man, we're gonna want to lure you here. You gotta come here. <laughs> I know, right? Grateful for the weather. You can't complain here. That's right. That's right. Do you have a gratitude, George? Yeah. Wonderful. I love it. All the family together for Thanksgiving. Wonderful. Beautiful. Any other Thanksgivings this day? Paula. I'm thankful that the Kaiser nurses solved their issue and I can get my booster next week. Yeah. <laughs> All this grateful that the Kaiser nurses solved what a, their issue and uh, and that she can get her booster next week. So yes, we are we are grateful for boosters for sure. Yeah. In that same vein, I'm very thankful that five to eleven year olds are five to eleven. Their vaccines. So we have we have some six year olds running around here that are vaccinated. Well, vaccinated right. six year olds. <laughs> yes. That's right. We've got them running around here. Yeah. <laughs> That's great. Yeah, Sue. Oh, it's actually not a gratitude. Oh. I just wanted to say I also have guavas over there. Oh my gosh, guavas! You all. What? That's a you're. That's amazing. That's like a month and a half running now. We've had guavas after worship. They're almost done. Okay. They're all, well, I, it's a gift. It's a gift. More guavas. That's wonderful. That's great. <laughs> wonderful. Well, friends, for all of these things spoken. Mariava has one. Oh, Mariava. No, I was just pointing to Sue. Okay. <laughs> she was just being sure that you were heard. So that's great. All right, friends, for all these things spoken and unspoken, let us say together, thanks be to God. Thanks be to God. All right, we are going to turn now uh, to our offering time. Um, as you know, we have baskets uh, up here, which um, you are invited to uh, put financial offerings into this day. Uh, and we also know here that, um, that offering is more than just financial, that we uh, offer the way we live our lives to God. Um, so we're gonna just take a moment of silence now to think about uh, the way that you will center God in your life this week and what you will offer up to God this week. Let's take a moment to ponder that now. Amen. May it be so. We're going to turn now uh, to our doxology, so I invite you, if you feel so called, to please stand, and we will sing the doxology together, the praise God from whom all blessings flow, that's the doxology, um, and please follow along with the words in your bulletin.
Just a few uh, announcements for you all. Um, one is that your pastor was a little bit optimistic uh, about when the sanctuary work was going to be done. Turns out projects always take longer than you think they're going to take. So, um, so we are going to be decking the sanctuary, <laughs> decking the halls, uh, the first Saturday in December. So we can come and deck the halls um, on December 4th in the morning, and then we can gather together and we're going to watch Nightmare Before Christmas, which is the best movie. If you haven't seen it, you need to see it. Um, yeah, see, Cesar is clapping over there. He knows. He knows what's up. Nightmare Before Christmas. Uh, so we're going to watch that uh, out in our amphitheater space and have roast marshmallows and uh, all kinds of stuff. I know. I see your face. Roasting marshmallows. Pretty fun, you all. Pretty fun fun so you don't want to miss it you don't want to miss it okay so December 4th mark that date deck the halls watch a movie okay all right we have an Advent study starting December 1st and I think this is your last week to get orders into the office is that correct mm -hmm. yeah, so get your book orders into Lee we like to support our local bookstore um, La Playa books and so we'll be ordering from them to get our books in time um, chime choir you all. A group of us sat around a table and ordered chimes for the church this week. And the woman was overwhelmed by our squeals of delight when we placed our order. So she sent an email and was like, I can tell you we're really excited. And we were like, yes, we're really excited. You don't have to read music. You don't have to be able to do any of those things. Uh, you just have to count and like music. So if you can do those things, then you definitely should be a part of it. Uh, Judy's going to be uh, leading us. And Lee and I are going to do it. We're going to have a whole wild group of chimers. Oh, good, good. OK, so you all, it's going to be such a blast. We've watched a bunch of little kids do it on YouTube, so I think we can do it. Um, so we're going to see what happens. And we'd love to have you come be a part of it. Google chimes. It's not like da -da -da -da. it's like these long things you go like this with. They're I don't know. Hand chimes. Hand chimes. They're not the thing, the long tubes that they found with hammers in the symphony. It's a little thing that does this. You ring it like a bell, but it rings easier. It's lighter. I don't know. If it's... you can do this. You are qualified yes. for chime If you can do this, come join our chime, chime time. I keep wanting to call it. Come join chime time. Okay? All right. Great. Uh, so talk to Lee in the church office, and she can get you signed up for everything there. Um, when does that start, Megan? When is it starting? As soon as the chimes get here. We ordered them. Now we're just waiting for them, so who knows? A week or two, we'll get the chimes, and then we'll start. Yeah, so there we go. All right, great. Um, men of Westminster, we love you all meeting so much that we said you were meeting again today. You are not meeting today. Um, but we invite you. Um, no, yeah, you're going to meet in the church. And it's not if we need help moving a bunch of pews. But it's not if you want to help. It's if you can help and not get hurt that you are invited to participate in that so we know you all would want to help but uh we invite those of you who uh can help and not have like serious injuries uh to help with that project and we'll be moving in there momentarily to do uh, a gratitude ritual for the sanctuary space um as we work as we work on Kate's back there going, we got this. <laughs> Big muscles. We got this. We got this. I love it. Um, and then last but not least, uh, Carolyn is uh, keeping the military outreach ministries before us. And this is a fun way that you can help, uh, help those in need right now. And that's by um, donating new unwrapped toys for children ages 2 to 12. And Carolyn decorated a basket uh, that looks like a giant present. And you can put your gifts in there, and we will be sure they get to uh, the military outreach uh, ministries. So I think that's it. Yeah. No? Nope. Last day of books. Not it. Last, and this is the last day of Michael's books. I put some new ones out. So there's new ones out there. So go check those out and take some books. Messiah.
When is it? Sunday, December 5th, 3 o'clock. We'll put it in here for next week. Uh, the Messiah at Point Loma Nazarene. Finally doing it in person. Uh, Pam will be uh, playing, what, 3 o'clock you said? 3 o'clock, and it's free. So good news all around there. Uh, so don't miss that, and let's, we'll be sure to put that in the, in the bulletin here. All right, I think that's it for our announcements. So now, beloveds, may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the binding force of the Holy Spirit be with you all this day and forevermore. Amen. Please stand as we sing our peace. We invite you to, uh, to put your hands out in front of you as we sing. So uh, we're going to go into the sanctuary. I invite you to mask up, please. If you don't have masks with you, there's a little tray of them. Uh, Alex will be holding it. He's the tallest one over there. Um, so you won't miss him. All right, so grab a mask, and let's go on into the sanctuary. Um, first of all, thank you. You all just being in here and talking and laughing together. Uh, Sarah, a session was in here the other night. Sarah remarked, that this room hasn't gotten a lot of laughter in two years. And so just to be in here and to be laughing and to be present here is a really big deal. Um, so this is exciting. So uh, let me tell you what we're doing, if you haven't heard. So we know that our spaces are a reflection of who we are and what we believe, OK? And over the past couple of years and through the trauma of the pandemic, We've continued to become more and more clear about the values that we hold as Westminster. And it is clear that at Westminster, we value being welcoming and being creative, right? Those are two things that we deeply value here. So we are beginning to reflect those values in even our most sacred of spaces, okay? So we are so excited uh, that we uh, are already embarking on the first phase of redoing the sanctuary space. Um, and so what's happening here is we are going to be replacing the flooring with a waterproof, a beautiful waterproof vinyl plank that's going to come in here. It's going to make uh, the space actually like really accessible. It's going to be great. Those of you worried about sound, don't freak out. We've been consulting with an acoustician whose whole job it is is to think about acoustics, and he's been helping us as we navigate this transition. This is the new plan. Oh, ah, thank you, man. With your generous donations, we can afford no, another. No, stop it. No, that is not true. That is not true. We
Here's what we believe. We believe that these views, in addition to being furniture in this space, they are theological statements. Okay, the views are theological statements. And here's what they're going to say. Everyone has a seat at the table. Everyone has a seat at the table. We value flexibility and creativity. We believe in community, and we are bringing tradition forward in a new and faithful way. Okay, that's what we're beginning to say with this space. So we are gonna be uh, exploring how to best have them arranged, um, but we are just so excited for the creativity that this is going to allow for us here. Okay, the options and ideas for these views are endless and exciting, and above all else, we believe faithful. They are very faithful, okay? So that's what's coming, but we are here today to give thanks for what has been in this space, okay? This space, since the early 1960s, since the early 1960s, has been, in the best sense, a sanctuary best sense of that word, this has been a sanctuary. So y'all, as we gather here in this sacred space, I want us to acknowledge with deep joy God's gift of this place. Taking a moment to remember with gratitude all who have worshipped here, the faith professed at the baptismal font, the gospel proclaimed from the pulpit, the sustenance received at the table, the chattering, crying, laughing, singing that happened in these pews. Let us reaffirm our faith in a sojourning God as this building is now beginning to be transformed. We know this God of ours is always doing new things. We know that. And our job as the church is to translate our ancient sacred tradition into new languages, new ideas, new spaces and places to speak our faith to new contexts, okay? In Westminster, this has always been a place where things like that have happened, where we have lived into who our creative God is. So we are gonna do a ritual of gratitude. You all have a part in this. After each uh, sentence I say, I will motion like this to you so you'll know it's your part. You're going to say, we give thanks, O oh God, okay? Okay, let us pray. Eternal God, whom the galaxies cannot contain, much less a building made by human hands, hear our prayer. For the church universal, of which this building is a symbol, we give thanks, thanks O oh God. God. For all the saints who in times past and present have formed a congregation of your people, and met in this place to offer their prayers and praise to you, we give thanks, O oh God. For those who have been made your children by adoption and grace in the waters of baptism in this place, we give thanks, O oh God. For your presence, whenever your word has been proclaimed and your gifts of bread and cup received here, we give thanks, O oh God. For your blessing, upon each of your children welcomed and nurtured here. We give thanks, O oh God, for all who came to ask your blessing in marriage, seeking to love with your love. We give thanks, O oh God, for faithful stewards who have lived for others, serving you by loving neighbors. We give thanks, O oh God, for all who, having lived this life in faith, now live eternally with you. We give thanks, O oh God, for the knowledge that your church and your ministry among us will continue in new and creative and loving and always, always faithful ways, today, tomorrow, and forever. We give thanks, O oh God. Bless us. Guide us as we embark on this transformation of this space, so that we may even more fully live into being your loving and creative people in the world. For all this, and even so much more which words cannot express, we say together, we give thanks, O oh God. Amen. Amen. All right, so here's our plan now. If you 
are physically able, these are really heavy, you all, okay? They're really heavy. But uh, Alex has a plan. Alex is the captain of this pew ship, okay? So you're, if you're able to help with the pews, stay in here. If you want to help in a different way, let's go clean up worship.